Hey everybody, this is Stephanie with Apex Languages. It's time for Words of the Week. I'm going to try to keep it short but sweet this week. Our word is galore. Today, as you may or may not know, is St. Patrick's Day, a Catholic holiday honoring, you guessed it, St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland. Nowadays, it is far from religion and actually bigger here in the United States where Irish immigrants wanted a way to celebrate their heritage than in Ireland itself. Everyone is Irish for the day. Unfortunately, the noble goal of honoring Celtic culture soon degenerated into an annual excuse to drink as much whiskey and green beer as possible. Why? Because the stereotype is that the Irish are always drunk. It is all admittedly a bit racist. That being said, here I'm going to try to right some of my people's wrongs by teaching you a little bit about the real Celts. At one point, more than 3,000 years ago, this ancient people roamed throughout much of continental Europe. When Julius Caesar and his Roman armies invaded what is today the United Kingdom, they were one of several major groups living in the area and they fought Roman and later German rule for centuries. Interestingly, although they were neighbors, very few Celtic words made it into standard English, although that number is much higher in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, where some of these languages are still spoken today. By very few, I mean like less than 50 exist in American English, not including place names. I've listed the most common ones here. So let's start with shamrock, leprechaun, whiskey. Okay, these are words that I'm sure you've seen out and about. Uh, the shamrock is, I've got a picture right here on the right. It's a little plant, a little green plant, also known as a clover. And if you can find one that has four leaves, it's considered a, a lucky clover. Okay, so you got to look for ones that have more than three leaves. Leprechauns, those are little green men who live at the end of rainbows and have uh, gold. Uh, so they're, they're elves. They're the, the Irish version of elves. They're magical. Whiskey can also be magical, uh, according to some people at least. Uh, we know that one. So those are all words that come from different Celtic languages. Bet you didn't know that the word clock was also Celtic. Bog is another word for like a swamp, okay, where it's uh, you put your foot in, you might not be able to get it back out. Um, very you know, like mud, basically. Uh, bother, okay, to bother someone is to uh, be annoying. Uh, something's a bother, it's annoying. Winnie the Pooh says that. A slogan, like an ad slogan, where's the beef? Uh, you know, that's a saying that someone uses to represent them. So these are all uh, very old Irish words. The ones over here, these ones are newer. These uh, came into our language maybe 100, 200 years ago. Boycott, that's a great word. Uh, it means when you don't buy something or use someone's surface uh, because you're protesting them. A hooligan is someone who's up to no good. Those hooligans, those those teenagers, they're gonna try to bust into my store. I don't trust them. And phony, phony means fake. So these are all great words that you can use in English and they're all come from Celtic languages. I saved the strangest to go into a bit more detail with you. Galore, repeat this one with me. Galore, galore, galore. It is an adjective. And obviously it's Celtic, it comes from the saying galore, which is enough. Galore means in great quantity, in abundance. My sample sentence is, because no one is traveling right now, there are deals galore on airfare. That means there's a lot of deals, a lot of sales going on right now. Do you notice anything weird about how galore is used? Look at the sentence. There are many deals. 
Many is an adjective. Why is it an adjective? Because it describes a noun. Right? Galore is also an adjective. But there are deals galore. Okay? Galore is unique in that it does not follow the regular English pattern. Spanish speakers enjoy, right? Other languages uh, might like this one better, okay? Because it follows uh, their pattern of noun and then the adjective. Remember, normal English order is adjective noun. But galore, because it, it comes from a different language, actually follows the noun that it's describing. So keep that in mind when you use galore. There are deals galore, not there are galore deals. So, you know, it means basically many, a lot, right? There are a lot of deals, but the word order is important with this word. I'll give you one more sentence. Now that you're stuck at home with your kids, you have time galore to work on homework. Uh, galore is usually used with a uh, positive connotation. So it's used to describe good things. Whether you think homework is a good thing or a bad thing, that's a matter of perspective. But as your teacher, I like it. And that brings us to practice makes perfect. Practice using galore or one of its Celtic relatives in a sentence. Maybe not clock. Clock's a little too easy. Um, but, you know, if one of those other words that you saw was also something that you're interested in learning more about, try using that word. You know, write a sentence in the, co uh, in the comment section. Send me an email. You know, you can write more than a sentence if you'd like. But try to use the vocabulary. I'm sure you've got other things galore to worry about right now. So I will let you go with that. Thank you as always for watching my videos. Check out more at apexlanguages.com. Have a wonderful, safe, healthy day.